I hate these things. Hey, quick episode. Uh, actually, it won't be a quick episode because I got so much to cover, so I'm going to talk really fast and hopefully you can keep up. First of all, uh, a couple episodes ago, I said I was going to cover that jib craning thing from Glide Gear that you put on a Steadicam vest and an arm and you walk around, you can take jib craning shots and it's awesome. I also said I was going to cover that Canova thing that you mount on top um, and it's a tracking axis uh, master axis tracker, I forget what it was called. Those are cool. Uh, the one allows you to take crane, jib shots, whatever, by yourself and uh, while moving. Uh, try and do that with uh, by yourself with any other piece of gear. The other one is really cool. You hook some motors up to it. And for instance, um, you could shoot yourself. You could, you could shoot yourself. You could um, put it over there or you could be acting in front of the camera or doing something like that or making test shots or whatever. Um, you can set this thing up and this thing will sit there and you'll set it up over there and as you're filming over time, you could take moving shots, but they stay on you because the whole camera's moving. Anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, the reason why I haven't done those I guess this is an excuse, uh, so bear with me. The reason I haven't done those is, as you know, the episode before that, before that, before that, I came back and I was like, woohoo, I get to catch up on my old episodes and I need to go. Well, ever since then, it has been a monsoon here. It has been windy and I didn't even want to take my equipment out. In fact, I'm not even sure I want to go outside because it's just been crazy rainy stuff and uh, I'm not gonna go out, take all this stuff outside and show you how, uh, hey, here's what crappy rainy shots look like that you can't see because it looks like crap. So I'm kind of holding off on that. I'm gonna have to go out and shoot those really quick, um, but I wanna show you outside shots. I don't wanna shoot inside shots. I mean, they work for the inside, but who wants to use a jib in the house? They wanna go outside and shoot cool things in a forest. So that's number one. Uh, number two, oh yeah. The last episode, which really wasn't an episode, I just threw something together quick. I shot on my iPhone. I've been messing with my studio. I hate, hated the wall back there. I was gonna paint it and I said to hell with that. So I threw up a green screen and I moved my lights around and you could see that. It's some time lapsey thing. Um, the lights were up there and I moved them over here. Normally, uh, what I would do is I would uh, take my glasses off. I'd put another light up there, pretty bright one that shines over here and gives me some eye lights. I haven't done that yet. So if you don't see eye lights, or I look like a, what is it, a salamander? The reason for doing all this is because I am setting up a low cost, cheap, effective, basic series. It's actually gonna be about two videos. So I'll call it a series, a series 0 0.5, half a series, um, on how to set one of those up, how to light it cheaply, um, and then how to handle things on pulling your green screen. You may think you know how to pull a screen screen. That's great. I'm glad you do. Um, here's how it should be done. You shoot someone like me, not like this. Shoot someone like me. You bring in your footage. You go over and you grab your keyer and whatever program you use. You click on it, make a few adjustments, done. There should be no funny lines. Um, you shouldn't be getting a haircut. What I mean by that is uh, when you pull a green screen, you, you know all those fine details where the hair's uh, coming out and you see all those fine details. Um, those get chopped off. The reason they do is not because you're a shitty keyer, it's because you didn't like that properly. I'm also gonna show you a very cheap tool. I mean, we're talking a couple of dollars on how to make sure that green screen is lit. What you see with your eyes, like right now, it's uh, sort of okay. If I tried to pull a green screen on that, it would look like crap. Um, it needs to be evenly lit all the way across at a certain percentage. I'm gonna show you how to do that really cheaply. The end product of that is you go, hey, I think I'll shoot a green screen. It's really easy. You set it up, bam, bam, bam. You uh, uh, shoot it, you pull your footage in, you go get your keyer, you uh, take your little dropper, go boom, it goes away. You make a few minor adjustments, you drop in your background or whatever, and you're like, wow, I'm a Hollywood keyer. Okay, maybe not, but pretty damn close. Um, but you'll look like a pro and it's really, really basic. Uh, what's the other thing? Green screen, the things, the thing. Oh yeah, uh, back to glasses. Glasses. I really do hate these things. I don't like shooting with them on. Um, as I said, I'm not done here yet. I have a few lighting things to do. Uh, but here's some tips. Uh, first of all, if you have glasses and uh, you're trying to light a scene and you're trying to light something, uh, just take them off. It's so much easier to deal without glasses or glass in general. 
Um, so that's the easiest thing. If you have talent um, and they can't see with them off, then they can wear contacts, which is okay because obviously if the uh, director's sitting there uh, 10 or 20 feet away, they're giving them direction or they're giving them cues, uh, which when the scene rolling is kind of a bad idea, but we'll get into that later. They're trying to hit marks and things. If they can't see, that's bad. They trip over things and they get hurt, uh, and that's really bad. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can take the glass out. Um, taking glass out is cool in comedies, uh, it looks kind of quirky. Maybe the guy's a nerd, maybe the guy where he's a hipster or whatever the latest word for that thing is. Um, and that's cool in a comedy and a dramatic thing if you take the glass out and um, that's cool. You shoot it, everybody sets up their lights, lighting people are happy, the DP is happy, the cameraman's happy, everybody likes happy. Oh, we can just shoot away and this guy has this thing with no glass, we don't have to worry about lights. I'm gonna warn you, uh, what happens is then you hand it over to your editors and your compositors that may be one or 20 or 500 people, um, and then they see this footage, uh, a not comedy footage, and the guy's not trying to be quirky without any glass in there, and they realize that they're gonna to have to spend innumerable hours tracking the eyes and putting in glass on the talent throughout the whole thing um, because there's no reflection of the uh, environment. That is really gonna piss them off. In fact, editors and compositors are known to secretly keep bazookas in their offices for just such an incident. And when you do that, they will actually find you and they will shoot you with a bazooka in the head and blow all your brains against the wall. Um, you think I'm joking? Uh, try it sometime and let me know if you live. So that's another thing you can do is um, you can do that. Now, if you know of some way to keep glasses from reflecting light, which is contrary to glass because it reflects light, let me know. Like I said, these are ridiculously expensive. These are Nikon lenses, anti-glare, anti-reflective, anti-nuclear radiation coating and everything else. I mean, they're stupid expensive. They're like the cost of a decent DSLR and they reflect light. So uh, best thing to do is take them off or wear contacts. Um, if you know of some way to get over that, I don't know, I've researched it. I've heard of sprays, I've heard of coatings, I've heard of all sorts of stuff and uh, none of them work. If you know something, leave a comment below. Uh, let me know, I'd, lo I'd love to find out. Uh, is there anything else? Okay, I covered glasses, way too much. I covered the gear that I had to apologize for and didn't do. Um, I covered where I'm going with this whole back thing and I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I guess I'm not. So I hope that helps and thanks for watching. So one thing you can do is you can take the glasses off and then you can drop them on the floor. <clears throat> and then um, you can stamp on them and crush them into the floor. And then you can uh, come back to your senses and then you can realize that you need to drive to the store and you need to pick up some glasses because you just crushed your ridiculously expensive glasses. But you can't because you can't drive because you can't see. So then you need to go to your wife and say, honey, in a fit of insanity, I uh, was filming something and I threw my glasses on the floor and then I stamped them into the ground. Um, could you drive me to the store, please? Um, and oh, by the way, they're gonna cost a ridiculous amount of money to replace them. And uh, I love you and thank you for marrying me and tolerating uh, my bullshit. <laughs>